we're very honored today then to have us sort of lead us off uh, a new TV star. Um, he was on John Stewart, uh, the Comedy Central uh, Daily Show, but it was actually a very serious program. I watched it, and uh, it was exciting to see Ohio really featured. But Congressman Steve Stivers is, is in his first term as a member of Congress, representing the 15th Congressional District. He's a career soldier, served 27 years in the National Guard, now holds the rank of Colonel, Colonel Stivers. He served during the Iraqi Freedom, where he led 400 soldiers and contractors, and is proud that every one of them returned to the United States safely. He's received a Bronze Star for his service. He's been a real champion, several things he's pr been promoting for Ohio and nationally. So I'm going to let him share a little bit about what he's doing on the national level to start us off. I'm very glad he's taken the time during a very busy season to come and speak to us. Thanks, Justice Stratton, and uh, I appreciate uh, Justice Stratton hosting us here today and uh, doing everything she's done to really establish veterans' courts and uh, look after our veterans when they come home. Uh, you know, it's a real um, great thing that people care about our veterans that way, and uh, I certainly appreciate it. I know General Ashenhurst probably appreciates it, and all of us in the room. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to be with you here today, and I thought I'd talk to you a little bit about uh, what's going on with uh, post-traumatic stress and traumatic brain injury at the national level. A couple other things, there are a lot of challenges going on for our veterans right now, uh, from veterans claims that take up to a year to get processed, to uh, a veterans uh, administration that has uh, a lot of challenges and, and maybe not enough resources always. So uh, we're trying to do everything we can to help out. I wanna say a special word about Dr. Chris Ann Gordon and her tireless work to combat traumatic brain injury and uh, post-traumatic stress that affects so many of our soldiers' lives. And, and Dr. Gordon's been just a hero and a hard worker and, and made a difference for a lot of soldiers and, and sailors and airmen and Marines. And uh, you know, I see her in Washington campaigning. I see her all over the country working hard to take care of our soldiers. And, and I really appreciate that we have patriots like that who are willing to step up and make things happen. Well, I joined the uh, Brain Injury Task Force, Congressional Brain Injury Task Force, uh, because I thought it was important and I thought we needed to shed a little light on post-traumatic stress and traumatic brain injury. Um, and uh, I'm also, as Justice Stratton said, a colonel in the Army National Guard, so I've been deployed and, uh, and I have a lot of friends who've been deployed. I've, unfortunately friends who've committed suicide and uh, there's a real epidemic of that going around and I want to talk about all those things today. Uh, we have too many veterans returning home with post-traumatic stress. We also have too many veterans returning home with traumatic brain injury. Uh, and the, the conditions together and the reminders of war too often lead to suicide and you know just last year we had uh, 350 active duty service members commit suicide. We had a lot of National Guard and Reserve soldiers also commit suicide. It's not just an active duty problem. Um, it's a, in the Guard and Reserve as well. And um, we need to make sure we spend our time and our energy and our resources to save these veterans' lives. And the, the evidence is that post-traumatic stress, traumatic brain injury, depression, and suicide are all interrelated. And the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq have obviously um, helped, have facilitated a dramatic increase in all these conditions. And uh, just in 2011, the Defense Medical Surveillance System reported 31,380 new cases of traumatic brain injury and 17,818 first-time cases of post-traumatic stress. And the Department of Veterans Affairs is doing a good job of trying to address it. And now, um, when people come to the VA in a new way, um, they actually get a PTS screening, and that's repeated every five years. And I think that, uh, I applaud that. Um, that makes a difference and it helps identify folks. And when people request or are referred for mental health services, they get their initial assessment within 24 hours and have a full evaluation within 14 days now. And I think that will help uh, make a difference, and I applaud what the VA is doing on that. They're doing great work. And, 
you know, they um, they don't always get enough credit for the great things they're doing at the VA, and, and I want to say thanks for that. In the 112th Congress, uh, we've tried to make sure that we uh, fund the things that matter. We funded uh, 6.2 billion for uh, mental health care, 72 million for suicide prevention programs, 35 million for medical research for traumatic brain injury and post-traumatic stress, and uh, 60 million uh, for uh, tr uh, traumatic brain injury treatment. Uh, we also funded 417 million for post-traumatic stress treatment. So all those things I think will help make a difference. There's a couple of bills going on that uh, I'm working with to try to get done. Uh, Pete Sessions out of California has a bill uh, called the Traumatic Brain Injury Treatment Act and it creates a five-year pilot to address um, traumatic brain injury and post-traumatic stress and uh, it was included in the National Defense Authorization Act which uh, we passed the House and we've got to make sure we uh, get it through the Senate uh, and then Representative Rooney, Tom Rooney from Florida has a bill that uh, uh, expands mental health care and TRICARE uh, it's uh, HR 208. I'm a co-sponsor of that. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, we need to get that bill done too, and, and we need to continue to help our veterans. We also need to make sure we look after our veterans when they come into drug courts. Barb Taylor in my office has been working with uh, uh, the I'm sorry with veterans courts. Been working with Justice Stratton and the and the team as you've been working to get veterans courts in as many counties as you can. And and I know it's uh, you got to work to get an advocate in each county and, and that's uh, um, that's there are a lot of great people out there who want to do it which is great we have great judges throughout the state uh, but we should have a veterans court in every county and we should uh, absolutely look after that uh, I look forward to working on all these issues in the future and uh, I hope we can work together to make sure that as our soldiers do come home they get all the care they need you know I've been in Congress just a short 22 months and I, I go to Walter Reed Medical Center about every two months now, and they moved it from Washington, D.C. to, to uh, Bethesda now. But uh, I see our brave soldiers come back, our wounded warriors, some of whom who have uh, you know, post-traumatic stress and traumatic brain, brain injuries, others who are amputees. But the thing that I've been really um, affected by when I go see them is their spirit. You know, these wounded warriors are ready to charge forward and they um, they make you feel really good about the human condition and the human spirit and what you can do. I mean, I've seen quadruple amputees, they're ready to go. And they're ready to get their new legs and get their arms and go. And it's incredible and they're ready, they've got goals. Uh, I've not talked to one of them who doesn't have a life goal that knows what they're there for and what they want to move forward on. And it, it's really inspiring to see it it's sad that, that those kind of things happen in war, but it is incredible to see those very powerful human stories. Um, and these are great heroes for our country, and they deserve our support, uh, whether they have a physical or a mental injury as a result of war. And uh, we all need to stand up and make sure that we look out for them I'll work hard to do that. I'll work hard with all of you in the future. Thanks for having me today, and thanks for all of your work. Thanks, Justice Stratton. Thanks for all of you in the audience. Colonel Moe is doing great things for veterans. You know, one of our challenges is we still don't, it's hard to find who all the veterans are. Colonel Moe's working on that issue. He's working on a lot of issues and really trying to resolve them with the 88 uh, Veterans Service Centers um, in the counties, too. So he's got that same challenge that uh, Justice Stratton talked about that he's doing a great job. And of course, we have a great adjutant general and Debbie Ashner's doing great things for our guard. Thanks for including me today. I look forward to working with you in the future as we try to serve our veterans and make sure they get the care and support they need when they come home. God bless you. Thank you so much, Justice Stratton.